Welcome to the lesson on Introduction to Atoms and Molecules. At the end of this lesson, we will be able to Explain the Law of Conservation of Mass Explain the Law of Constant Proportion List the postulates of Dalton's atom Define an atom Identify the symbols of elements Define a molecule. Identify the atomicity of elements. Define an ion. Define valency. And write a chemical formula of a compound. Law of conservation of mass states that matter can neither be created nor be destroyed. When we burn a piece of paper, we do not destroy it, but it changes to carbon dioxide and ashes. So, matter can neither be created nor be destroyed. Let us prove it by an experiment. Take a little solution of sodium carbonate in a conical flask. Take little copper sulphate in a test tube. Hang the test tube in the flask as shown. Put a cork on the flask. Weigh this assembly of flask and test tube. It weighs 44 grams. Now tilt and swirl the flask so that X mixes with Y. Now again weigh the assembly. It still weighs 44 grams. To prepare halva, we need suji, ghee, sugar and water in a constant proportion. Similarly, in a chemical substance, the elements are always present in definite proportion by mass. Example, water is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. No matter wherever we take water from, sea, river or domestic tap, you will find water made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. John Dalton put forward a theory known as Dalton's Atomic Theory. According to John Dalton, all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are indivisible particles which cannot be created or destroyed. Atoms of a given element are identical in mass and chemical properties. Atoms of different element have different mass and chemical properties. Atoms combine in a ratio of small whole numbers to form compound. The relative number and kind of atoms are constant in a given compound. There are so many elements in the world. How do we memorize so many elements? Dalton was the first scientist to use symbols for elements in a very specific sense. These are symbols for some elements as proposed by Dalton. IUPAC International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry has named each element in a scientific manner. A symbol is represented by the first alphabet of the atom of that element. In cases, the names of two elements begin with the same alphabet, first two alphabets are chosen. Sometimes, symbol is also derived from the Latin name of the element. These are some of the elements whose symbol has been derived from their Latin names. What is atomic mass? Atomic mass is the mass of one atom of the element. That atom is so very small. Do we weigh the mass of an atom in a beam balance? No, it is not possible to weigh atoms directly. To find the weight of an atom, we weigh it indirectly. The weight of one cube of dairy milk chocolate is 1 upon 12 of the total weight. Same way, 
carbon-12 isotope was taken as standard reference for measuring atomic masses. The relative atomic mass of the atom of an element is defined as the average mass of the atom as compared to 1 upon 12th mass of one carbon-12 atom. What is a molecule? A molecule is the smallest particle of an element that is capable of an independent existence and shows all the properties of that substance. Atoms don't exist independently. They exist in the form of a molecule. Molecules of many elements are made up of only one atom of that element like sodium, potassium and helium. A molecule of hydrogen consists of two atoms of hydrogen. Similarly, a molecule of oxygen consists of two atoms of oxygen. Hence, they are called diatomic molecules. The number of atoms constituting a molecule is known as atomicity. These are some of the examples of diatomic molecules as each of these contains two atoms. Phosphorus molecule and sulfur molecule are called polyatomic molecules. Four phosphorus atoms combine to form P4 and eight sulfur atoms combine to form S8. In a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. An imbalance between proton and electron results in a charge on the atom. A charged atom is called an ion. In a sodium atom, number of protons is equal to 11 and number of electrons is also equal to 11. When sodium loses one electron, it means that sodium atom has one proton more than the number of electrons. Sodium becomes positively charged. In a chlorine atom, number of protons and number of electrons are both equal to 17. When chlorine atom gains one electron, then chlorine atom has one electron more than the number of protons. Chlorine becomes negatively charged. When an atom loses one electron, it has one proton more than the number of electrons and the atom is positively charged. It is called cation. When an atom gains one electron, it has one electron more than the number of protons and the atom is negatively charged. It is called anion. In sodium chloride, sodium is cation and chlorine is anion. Each of these ions combines to form a molecule of sodium chloride. We know that atoms of one element combine with the atoms of another element to form a compound. Each compound has a specific combining capacity. This combining capacity of an element is known as valency. In hydrochloric acid molecule, valency of each hydrogen and chlorine is 1. In water molecule, valency of oxygen is 2, while valency of hydrogen is 1. That is why two atoms of hydrogen combine with one atom of oxygen to form one molecule of water. Some compounds have group of elements as ions. When one oxygen ion combines with one hydrogen ion, positive and negative charges do not balance. Oxygen has two negative charges while hydrogen has one positive charge. As a result, upon combining, Hydroxide ion has one negative charge. Hence, valency of a hydroxide ion is 1. Valency of chlorine atom is 1. Magnesium and calcium has valency as 2. Nitrogen and aluminium has valency as 3. Carbon has valency 4. Among the ions, carbonate and sulfate has valency 2. Nitrate and ammonium ions have valency 1. How do we know about the chemical formulas of so many compounds? Do we have to learn them all? No, not at all. But we have to learn the valencies of some positive and negative radicals. Sodium, potassium, silver 
and copper are positive radicals which have valency as 1. Hydride, chloride, bromide and iodide are negative radicals which also have valency as 1. Polyatomic ions like ammonium, hydroxide, nitrate and hydrogen carbonate also have 1 valency. Some of the positive radicals having valency as 2 like magnesium, calcium, zinc, iron and copper. Oxides and sulphides are negative radicals having valency 2. Carbonate, sulphide and sulphate are polyatomic ions having valency as 2. Aluminium and some positive radical ions have valency as 3. Nitride and phosphate are negative radicals having valency as 3. A chemical formula denotes the number of atoms of each element present in a compound. To write a chemical formula, the positive and negative ions are written side by side. Valencies of the ions are written below it. The final formula is obtained by crossing over the valencies of the combining atoms. These are some examples for writing chemical formulas. Write the formula of sodium hydroxide. Since valency of each sodium ion and hydroxide ion is 1, hence formula is NaOH. Valency of calcium ion is 2, while that of phosphate ion is 3. Upon cross multiplication of valencies, we get formula of calcium phosphate as Ca3 PO4 the whole 2. Valency of potassium ion is 1, while that of carbonate ion is 2. Hence, upon cross multiplication of valencies, we get formula of potassium carbonate as K2CO3. At the end of the lesson, we are able to explain the law of conservation of mass, explain the law of constant proportion, List the postulates of Dalton's atom. Define an atom. Identify the symbols of elements. Define a molecule. Identify the atomicity of elements. Define an ion. Define valency. And write a chemical formula of a compound. Visit ATEC Academy on www.atecedu.com or contact on 904